On December 10, 1941, mere days after Pearl Harbor, the Pacific had quickly become the newest battleground of World War II, where the Allies faced a new enemy, the Empire of Japan. That day, Force Z, a British naval squadron in the South China Sea, aimed to deter Japanese expansion in the Far East. The group had a key player in their mix, HMS Electra. This E-class destroyer, led by Lieutenant Commander Cecil Wakeford May, quickly gained a reputation from Norway to Russia to the Pacific Islands. Her lucky streak as a successful convoy escort earned her the nickname Lucky Electra. Without air cover, despite the superiors' pleas, the Z Group provided escort and anti-submarine defense. The Allies underestimated Japan's military capabilities at the time, assuming their longest-range torpedoes were ineffective. Their mistake was quickly made evident when nearly a hundred land-based and torpedo bombers of the Imperial Japanese Navy surrounded the entire Z Force. The stage was set for Lucky Electra to prove it still deserved that name. On September 3, 1939, despite nationwide reluctance, Great Britain declared war upon Nazi Germany. With this, the High Command ordered all U-boats to begin hostile activities against their shipping, supposedly with instructions not to attack passenger liners. That same morning, more than a thousand civilians boarded the liner SS Athenia, eager to cross the Atlantic Ocean and reach the safety of North America. And despite zigzagging and running with her lights out, U-30 torpedoed and sank the vessel on the very first day of the war in Europe. With this, all the desperate surviving passengers, nearly a quarter of them American, clung to life rafts, waiting for help to arrive. Amongst the five vessels that responded to the passenger liner's distress signal was the destroyer HMS Electra, an E-class destroyer of the Royal Navy. Designed in the interwar period for quick response and high agility, she displaced about 1,405 tons and stretched 329 feet in length, and her complement consisted of 170 officers and enlisted personnel. On that occasion, Lieutenant Commander Stuart Austin Buss, captain of the Electra, assumed command as the senior officer present. Swiftly coordinating the response, he directed the HMS Fame to conduct an anti-submarine patrol around the vicinity. Meanwhile, Elektra, alongside HMS Escort, the Swedish yacht Southern Cross, the Norwegian freighter Knut Nelson, and the American tanker City of Flint embarked on a rescue mission, successfully saving 980 individuals from passengers and crew. For Elektra, this was the first, but not the last time, she would pluck survivors from the sea. Following a rescue operation for the passengers of the Athenia, the destroyer and her crew shifted their focus to the critical task of convoy protection, dedicating themselves to this duty throughout the eight-month duration of the phony war in Europe. Destroyers like HMS Electra were versatile warships, engaging in a broad spectrum of naval operations. Their responsibilities extended beyond convoy protection, including anti-submarine warfare, mine laying, and engaging enemy aircraft and surface ships. With a top speed of 26 knots and exceptional agility, they were indispensable in safeguarding capital ships, while their comprehensive armament, consisting of four or 4.7-inch guns, anti-aircraft weapons, and torpedo tubes, made them a veritable threat to any adversary. However, the rapid advancement of naval technology during the interwar years meant that ships like the Electra were outpaced by newer destroyer designs from Germany, Italy, France, and Japan, which boasted superior anti-aircraft capabilities. This technological leap rendered Electra and her contemporaries somewhat obsolete, particularly in air defense, even before they were launched. Despite these technological disadvantages, Electra distinguished herself through her operational record. Remarkably, no merchant vessel under her protection was ever lost to enemy action throughout her service. This impressive feat earned her the moniker Lucky Electra, a testament to her effectiveness and perhaps a touch of fortune. The onset of Germany's invasion of Norway in the spring of 1940 saw Elektra and her crew venturing into the Arctic waters, where she escorted troop ships aimed at countering the Nazi advance. It was during these operations that Elektra, despite her outdated armament, achieved her first anti-aircraft victory. The gun crew managed to spot and engage an enemy aircraft before it could detect the massive ship, successfully hitting it and watching as it plummeted behind the snowy mountains. In that same month, Electra had the opportunity to join the escort for the battlecruiser HMS Warspit, participating in an operation that resulted in the destruction and grounding of several Kriegsmarine ships, a major early victory for the Royal Navy. However, Captain Buss decided against joining this mission. Towards the end of April, still operating in Norwegian waters, Electra and other destroyers 
provided protective screening for the aircraft carrier HMS Ark Royal. This operation saw continuous launches of aircraft targeting German positions. In the chaos of the operation, Elektra and her sister ship Antelope collided, necessitating repairs for Elektra. Following her involvement in the Norwegian campaign, HMS Elektra continued her duties in convoy protection and anti-submarine patrols in the Atlantic, securing sea lanes against U-boat threats and ensuring the safe passage of merchants and military ships. As 1940 wound down on New Year's Eve, the crew was informed that Captain Buss was to be succeeded by Lieutenant Commander Cecil Wakeford May. Under May's command, in the month of May 1941, with the war in Europe extending more than ever, Elektra and three other destroyers patrolled south of Iceland with the battlecruiser HMS Hood and the brand new battleship HMS Prince of Wales. At the time, the group knew that Bismarck, the Kriegsmarine's most feared battleship, had recently been sighted nearby. Following instructions from the Admiralty, the battlecruiser, the battleship, and four destroyers steamed westward into the night, ready to intercept the German ship. According to data, HMS Hood, the largest warship in the world at the time, armed with 15-inch guns, was more than an up-to-par choice to go up against Bismarck. However, unbeknownst to the Allies, while Bismarck was officially 35,000 tons, she was secretly built to be the equal of Hood in tonnage and had the same weaponry. In the earliest hours of May 24, 1941, Captain May ordered the crew to action stations, telling them to expect contact at dawn. The British lookout searched the endless night for the elusive enemy, scanning the horizon with their own eyes, as radar was still primitive at the time. The hours went by slowly. While the battlecruiser and the battleships were capable of faster speeds, the escorting destroyers soon suffered from heavy damages, like smashed parts and ripped funnels. With no other choice, the flotilla's commanders allowed the smaller destroyers to steam at a slower speed, and Electra's men watched as the two main ships floated on by themselves. Mere minutes later, the destroyers received a radio message from Hood, quote, Enemy in sight, am engaging. Back on decks, lookouts heard strange and hard to make out muffled guns. No more than 10 minutes later, radio operators received another message, quote, Hood sunk. Upon hearing this, an incredulous gunnery officer named T.J. Kane cursed the signalman for his supposedly sick joke. But the worried radio operator was not joking, and gossip spread. Soon, even before the official announcement, the crew of HMS Electra was preparing for rescue operations. They'd done it successfully before with Athenia, and were prepared to do it again. Knowing that HMS Hood had a nearly 1,500 men complement, the crew aboard Lucky Electra prepared blankets, life preservers, medical supplies, and warm food and beverages for the survivors. Many also were willing to abandon their cabins to allow injured sailors to recuperate properly. However, once they came upon the wreckage of the battlecruiser, they realized the horrible truth. HMS Hood was likely gone with all hands. Pushing slowly and carefully through the mountains of floating debris, looking for survivors, they spotted three men clinging to pieces of the now sinking ship, and all were wrapped in blankets and sent to receive first aid. While the destroyer continued her search well into the early morning hours, those three lucky men were all that remained of the once mighty ship. Low on fuel, and with morale destroyed, Electra and Prince of Wales gave up the chase for Bismarck and returned to English safety. While the new battleship underwent repairs for superstructure damage, Electra received a new Ehrlichan anti-aircraft gun. Once ready for battle in July, the destroyer was sent to escort the very first convoy to Soviet Russia, England's newest and very unlikely ally. While Electra's time in Norway's Atlantic coasts was cold, it was nothing compared to the Arctic. In addition to the ice-filled waters, these convoys faced relentless German U-boat and air attacks. Elektra and destroyer Anthony, as well as a handful of minesweepers and trawlers, set out in the high-stakes gamble with a charge of 13 merchant ships filled with vital aid to the Soviet Union. Once at the Russian port of Arkhangelsk, the English sailors met sullen, battle-worn Soviets. Still, the Russians were able to scratch together a small convoy of merchantmen for Elektra to escort back to England, and the group arrived safely in Allied land. After one more overhaul, Elektra, alongside previous teammate HMS Prince of Wales, headed toward warmer waters in the Pacific. 
but as the small flotilla neared the Far East, the crew realized the weather did not mean vacation, as tensions were higher than ever. Electra was one of four destroyers destined for Singapore as part of Force Z, which included HMS Prince of Wales and battlecruiser HMS Repulse. As the flotilla headed for their destination, their commander, Admiral Sir Tom Phillips, met with his American counterparts, General Douglas MacArthur and Admiral Thomas Hart, to insist upon a combination of forces in case of Japanese aggression, now more likely than ever. However, the isolationist sentiment in the United States led to a resounding no that they would soon regret. Force Z arrived in Singapore on December 2, 1941. That morning, superstitious sailors aboard Electra gossiped that the combination of battleship, battlecruiser, and four destroyers was exactly the same as the one earlier in the year that had disastrous results. While the aircraft carrier HMS Indomitable was initially chosen to provide air cover, her last-minute docking meant they would have to move forward without air support. Within a week following the Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor and nearby English positions, there was a full-blown war in the Pacific. And while Admiral Phillips pleaded for whatever aircraft available, even if it was the antiquated plane stationed in Malaya, the Western Allies continued to believe that the Empire's air power and strategy knowledge were inferior. On December 10th, following two reports of Japanese landings at Kwantan and Express, Force Z investigated the area, but the team found nothing in sight. Afterward, the flotilla headed back out to sea, beyond the range they believed Japanese enemy torpedo bombers reached. But unbeknownst to Allied intelligence, the Japanese had some of the best air-launched torpedoes in the world. Force Z was about to find this out. Upon spotting the first enemy planes approaching, Captain May steered Electra between Prince of Wales and Repulse. Soon enough, 85 enemy planes swarmed in to destroy the ships. In the midst of a cacophony of anti-aircraft gunfire, roaring engines, and screaming sailors, despite all possible maneuvers by the British ships, the torpedo bombers surrounded them. Coming from so many directions, it was impossible for them not to hit their targets. By the time land-based Royal Air Force aircraft arrived to save the day and chase off the Japanese, it was too late for the sinking Prince of Wales and Repulse. Once again, Electra, accompanied by sister ships, began survivor duty. This time, just like with Athenia all those months before, about a thousand Repulse crewmen, shell-shocked and scared, were rescued and crammed aboard the destroyer. During the first few weeks of 1942, Lucky Electra was hard at work, escorting convoys of reinforcements into Singapore and convoys of wounded civilians out. Simultaneously, the Empire of Japan advanced towards Singapore, an area considered impregnable due to its strong naval base and fortifications. On February 15, 1942, the destroyer HMS Electra was in Java when the crew heard the news that Singapore had fallen to the Japanese, who were gaining land seemingly by the day. By then, Lucky Electra was part of ABDA, a multinational American, British, Dutch, and Australian force, and the first Allied naval fleet of the war. To protect the 500-mile Java coastline, the tiny armada was divided to cover the western and eastern shores. As the end of the month approached, Electra was at the eastern end of the island at Surabaya, with her British sisters Jupiter and Encounter, alongside an assortment of American and Dutch ships, all under the command of Dutch Admiral Carl Dorman. On the 27th, Admiral Dorman learned of advancing Japanese transports, but even before encountering them, the ABDA Allied fleet ran right into a Japanese squadron of cruisers and destroyers. The Battle of the Java Sea had begun, with the fearless Japanese advancing without mercy. Commander May ordered his ship to steam ahead and face the entire Japanese force alone. While her gunners scored first, the Japanese shells came back instantly, putting out Electra's guns one by one. With this, the damaged heavy cruiser HMS Exeter was able to steam away. Knowing Electra had done her final, honorable duty, as she began listing with Japanese shells still slamming into the destroyer, May ordered the crew to abandon the ship. According to a survivor, as she went under, quote, the ship sighed, settled more sleepily, turned over, and slowly sank. And with this, Lucky Electra was no more. While some of the survivors were picked up by the Japanese, adding to the long list of casualties, the darkness proved an ally for the rest and 42 men were rescued by an American submarine. The Battle of the Java Sea dealt a severe blow to Allied morale, and the Pacific would remain a fierce battlefield for years to come. <laughs>